Well, here we're going to solve this second water linear differential equation. And as you can see, we have initial conditions, right? So at the end, we have to solve for the constants. OK, so let's go ahead and change this into, you see, y double prime corresponds to r squared. And this is going to be plus 2r. And this is going to be plus 2, right? And equal to 0. So for r. Well, I cannot factor it, so we have to use the quadratic formula. Or you can do this by completing a square as well, if you like. Um, let me see, r is equal to negative b, which is negative 2, plus minus square root b squared, which is 2 squared, like this, minus 4 times a times c. Uh, in my opinion, in this case, completing a square is actually easier. But I know many of you guys really need to use the quadratic formula, so that's what I'm doing right here for you guys, okay? Anyways, this is going to be negative 2 plus minus, and we have the square root. This is 2 squared, which is 4, right? And then minus 4 times 1 is 4, times 2 is 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and then this is over 2 times 1, which is 2. And now, you see, this is negative 2, and then we have plus minus. Square root of negative 4 is 2i, and then we still have this all over 2. Well, now we can reduce, reduce. So we have negative 1 plus minus. Uh, reduce that, which is just 1, right? So right here, you see, this is the real part. So that's the alpha. Alpha is negative 1. And the right here, yeah, this is technically 1, i. So beta is equal to 1, like that, OK? All right. As long as you can solve for the r right here, you pretty much are done. And from here, you can tell that y of t is going to be in the complex root situation. Remember, you have e to the alpha t times the parentheses c1 cosine beta t, and then uh, c2 sine beta t, right? So let me write that down for you guys. This is e to the alpha t. Alpha is negative 1, so we have negative 1. And I'm factoring out this all the way in the front, okay? And then remember, the constants will go in front of the cosine and also the sine. So I'm not going to have any constant here. Anyways, inside here, I will have C1 cosine beta, which is 1. So let me just emphasize that we have that 1, t, and then plus C2 sine of beta, which is once again 1. So let me emphasize that, beta t, like all this. Okay, All right, so it's pretty nice. Okay, well, we have to solve for C1, C2 by using the initial condition, so let's go ahead and do that. This right here is telling me that, hey, t is equal to 0. In that case, y will be 2. So I have to just plug in 0 into all this right here. All right, so when t is equal to 0, uh, this is just going to be e to 0, so that's 1, so it doesn't matter anymore. And when t is equal to 0, plug into here, uh, we have cosine of 0, which is 1. And we have c1, right? So this is going to be c1. And when you plug in 0 into here, sine of 0 is just 0. So c2 doesn't matter in this right here. OK, fair enough. c1 is equal to 2. We know that right away, OK? All right, in order for me to use this, I have to differentiate what I have, OK? so. After I know c1 is equal to 2, I still have to differentiate. <laughs> Anyways, y prime of t, I'm just going to use the product rule, OK? I'm going to look at this as the first function, times this as the second function, and we know c1 is equal to 2 already, all right? Here's the product rule that I'm going to use. I'm going to keep the first function, which is e to the negative t, and I'll multiply by the derivative of this, and I'll put it here. Well, the derivative of this, the first one, it's going to be negative 2 sine t, right? Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. 2 is right here, and we have a negative sine. And that's t inside. And be sure to check the chain rule, right? The derivative of 1t is just 1, so multiplying by 1 doesn't matter. That's what we have. And the derivative of this is just going to be plus c2. The derivative of sine is cosine, and then we have the t. OK, so pretty nice. And I'm going to add, I will keep the second function, which is 2 cosine t, and then plus c2 sine t. And we will multiply by the derivative of this. 
the derivative of e to the negative t is going to be, first I repeat, e to the negative t, right? Negative 1t is the same thing. But I have to multiply by negative 1 because the derivative of negative t is negative 1. So be sure you have this negative 1 as well. Alright? Anyways, t equal to 0, and we will end up 1 for its derivative. When t is equal to 0, this is just 1, so I'm not going to put that down. When t is equal to 0, this is just going to be gone, so I don't need to worry about that. And when t is equal to 0, I will end up cosine 0, which is 1. So here, I will just have c2, okay? And continue. Plugging 0 into 2 cosine t, this is going to be 0, so it's 2 times 1, so I have 2. So let me just write down plus 2, okay? This is going to be 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. Plugging 0 into here, sine of 0 is 0, so this is going to be out. And that's pretty much what I have in this parentheses, but I still have to plug in 0 into this t. e to the negative 0, this right here will be 1. At the end, don't forget to multiply by negative 1, right? All right, so from here, you see 1 equals to c2 minus 2, right? So, of course, now you can just say, hey, c2 is equal to 3. Oops. C2 is equal to 3, right? I don't need to have C3. That's why. Alright, at the end, I'll just tell you, hey, y of t, this is equal to e to the negative t. Parentheses, C2, I mean C1 right here is 2. Oh my god. C1 right here is 2, so I'll put down 2 right here. And this is with cosine t. And then C2 right here is 3, so I'll put down plus 3, and then this is with sine of t. Okay, at the end of the day, this is all good. This is the answer, and that's it.